viewers once more welcome to our youtube channel in today's video we want to look at uh, patient presentation and how we can be able to clinically identify that the patient is having sepsis so we want to look at how if a patient presents with infections we want to look at how if a patient presents with an infection we can be able to identify from how this patient presents or from the vital signs that we take that this patient is having sepsis so this is the objective of today's presentation we want to look at how our patients will present and how we can be able to identify in a timely manner using our vital signs using how our patients are presenting to say that the patient is having sepsis so this is the objective of today's presentation remember in our definition of sepsis we put it critically an important aspect of sepsis which is to say that before sepsis comes there is an infection so in the context of this infection how do we identify that it is no more an infection but sepsis our patients can present with uh, variations of infections with varied infections like a patient who is having cough and fever this patient might possibly have an infection of the respiratory system also a patient or oh, our grandma who is a uh, 76 or 75 years old who is in a hospital and is having a urinary catheter and we have uh, blood urine or pus coming out of with urine or the patient is having also waist pain and the clinicians are be treating this patient from a urinary tract infection or a diabetic patient, our 60 year old uh, grandfather who is a diabetic, who is having a wound on the leg, and this wound becomes reddish, it becomes swollen and painful. There is force draining from this wound or coming out of this wound. This is a wound infection. Now, these are specific infections that we are having either of the respiratory system or of the urinary or of the of a wound infection so these are specific infections with specific presentations now if this patient is in a clinic or in a health center or in our emergency department or this is a patient that we admitted in the wards and we have been treating this patient of possibly malaria typhoid fever, a urinary tract infection, or a respiratory tract infection. This patient, we need to identify that either this patient is still in an infection or it is already sepsis. And we don't need to wait for laboratory results to come or we will not be able to say we will transfer this patient from Ako to Nkambe because transferring this patient from Ako to Nkambe is possibly going to take us the next six hours to be able to move this patient to a health facility that will be able to detect that this patient is having sepsis. But most of these patients will find them in our communities, in our clinics, in our health centers, and in our district hospitals. So we need to identify from the signs and the symptoms that this patient is having sepsis and septic shock. So now, Instead of having specific presentations like uh, blood urine, painful urination, or a cough and a kata, our patient starts presenting with difficulty breathing, there's an increased respiratory rate, or our patient starts having mental decline, characterized by what? By agitation, lethargy, disorientation, confusion, gradual loss of consciousness these are all signs of 
mental decline or from our parameters our patient starts having an increased heart rate our patient starts having cold extremities our patient presents in unexplained pain or generalized body pains these are all signs to tell us that the problem is no more a specific problem of the respiratory system of the urinary system of the nervous system for example a patient who came in with meningitis or is being managed in the world from meningitis this is to tell us that the problems are no more specific and from our definition of sepsis we said injury changes from a specific area which can be respiratory which can be urinary or it can be a specific specific like a wound infection so it changes from a specific area and injury goes systemic and our organ starts to to fail imagine that the patient starts presenting with this myriad of signs and symptoms and you find yourself in urata you find yourself in a flower you find yourself in Miami. how are you going to manage this patient so that you revive the patient, you stabilize the failing organs, the dysfunctional organs. It is important that we remember that vital science, vital science taking is an important part of our practice that is going to help us. It is going to be critical to determine dysfunctional organs. It is going to be critical that we use vital science to detect deterioration in our world patients, in our patients who present in the casualty, in our emergency department, or in our clinics, or in our health centers. We have to use vital science, because vital science will enable us to determine deterioration. And remembering that deterioration, sepsis is a common cause of deterioration in our patients. So when you have these patients, Remember that monitoring them is crucial in determining deterioration, in determining that the patient is having sepsis because sepsis is a common cause of deterioration. And one abbreviation that I want us to remember that we need to return today is time. T I M E. T stands for temperature, and temperature can either be increasing or it is decreasing so you can have hypothermia which is a temperature of above 37.5 degrees centigrade or you can have hypothermia which is a temperature of below 36.5 degrees centigrade and i stands for infection infection can either be a urinary tract infection, a respiratory tract infection, or a nervous system infection, or a wound infection. So, when you have an infection, you have a temperature of above 37.5 degrees centigrade or below 36.5 degrees centigrade with an infection. And M defines mental decline. You have mental decline and with Characteristically say that mental decline will present with agitation, patient is turning from left to right, patient wants to move, not being able to move, the patient is confused, the patient is disorientated, patient doesn't know where he or she is, doesn't know the time of the day, doesn't know the people around him. These are all signs of mental decline. So M stands for mental decline. And E stands for extremely ill extremely ill you look at somebody who wants to move but is not able to move the patient tells you that i don't even know how i am feeling this is to tell you that the patient is extremely ill the patient is weak the patient cannot move extremities these are all signs of extreme illness so when you have this it is very crucial that you identify that the patient is not well the patient is possibly having sepsis so now with these parameters how are you going to identify that it is now sepsis and not an infection 